Mark chapter 3, verse 29, the King James Version Bible. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. My friend Scott on Facebook just shared a site with me. I, I Just when you think you've seen it all, you never have. It takes a lot to shock me, and I don't get shocked very often. I'm not truly shocked here. I'm just so disappointed, and I'm just so filled with righteous anger. I'm so filled with holy discontent. Uh, you got to see us to believe it. There's a website called The Blasphemy Challenge. And it says, do you have a soul you're not using? And uh, they have a DVD that says a God who wasn't. They've got a badge that says uh, the, the national or the rational response squad USA with a God with a line and a circle drawn around like no God. <coughs> Excuse me. And here's what they say. You get a free DVD. I guess you might get a badge as well. But it says there's only one catch. We want your soul. It's simple. You record a short message damning yourself to hell. You upload it to YouTube. Then the Rational Response Squad will send you a free The God Who Wasn't There DVD. It's that easy. And the instructions are, you may damn yourself to hell however you would like. But somewhere in your video, you must say uh, the, uh, the phrase that you are denying the Holy Spirit. And they say because in Mark 3.29, the verse that I read above, that there's no forgiveness for that. You know, Satan is on the rampage like never before, my friends. Like never, ever, ever before. You see this garbage. You see everybody taking uh, classic Jesus pictures. Like Christ holding a lamb. Christ walking on the water. Christ coming out of the tomb. The classic Jesus pose you see on walls and places everywhere. Just a headshot of him. And the, the, the fish with Jesus. And putting Obama face and head and an Obama name inside the fish. You've got birth pangs everywhere. You've got the earth reeling and rocking like a to and fro like a drunkard. You've got earthquakes in diverse places all, all around the world. You've got all kinds of tornadoes and volcanoes everywhere. And you've got all kinds of, of crazy weather, crazy cold, crazy heat, crazy hurricanes, crazy freak storms, uh, the crazy things that you don't see happening places normally. You've got crazy ice ages in places that you haven't seen for for 500,000 or, or more years. You've got rampant uh, crime, rampant rape and murder. You've got the sodomites everywhere, furthering their agenda. You've got marijuana being approved legally. You've got Mr. Obama reelected. You've got everybody hating Israel, everybody hating God, everybody hating Jesus, everybody hating the Bible, everybody hating real Christians. You've got famine, plague, pestilence everywhere. You've got people starving. You've got banks collapsing. You've got homes, people being homeless, losing their homes, losing their jobs. It's everywhere, my friends. It's everywhere. These are the birth pangs. It's like when a woman has a child. As the birth pangs grow, grow stronger and stronger and, and closer and closer together, it signifies the nearness of the birth, the nearness of the delivery of that child, of that baby. Right now, all these birth pangs we're seeing are, are, are just showing the, the imminent deliverance of the bride of Christ out of this wicked cesspool of a planet that God created so perfect, but man is ruined. I'm so sick of this place. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of this blasphemy and this garbage and these lies. I'm just, I'm just fed up with it. I'm so tired of it. And so few Christians will say anything. They won't make a stand. You go across Facebook and you look on the general, the general postings on the general feed, and people are talking about just, you know, whatever's happening going in life. I'm having this for dinner tonight or I look at my new puppy or uh, I saw a cute picture somewhere. I'm not saying that stuff is wrong. I'm not saying it's bad to have that kind of thing. But I don't see the meat and potatoes hardly at all. I don't see people talking about all this stuff and condemning it and making a stand for Jesus Christ and putting Jesus Christ first. Taking off more and more of the world, putting on more and more of Jesus Christ every day. It's what we're supposed to do as Christians, my friends. I see the exact opposite and I'm so fed up. I'm so filled with righteous anger. I'm filled with holy discontent. I'm just sick of it. How dare you, Christians? We're Christians. We represent Jesus Christ, Christians. But few of us do. Few of us care. This stuff's got to stop. And I know the longer Jesus tarries, I know it's going to get worse. I know that. I know we're, we're in the great apostasy where the majority of Christians are, are, are growing apostate. And many, many, many are fully apostate. And the Bible says when you're fully apostate, you won't return to Jesus Christ. It's terrible. It's awful. It's horrible. We know it's got to happen. We know it's here, my friends, but we've got to make a stand. We've got to grow a spine, grow a backbone made of Kevlar, made of steel, made of iron. Put on the, the full armor of Jesus Christ every morning when we get up or afternoon, whenever we get up or night, 
and fight day and night. We're in a battle. We're at war, my friends. If you have, I've got friends that tell me, they'll tell me how they're picked on at school and made fun of because they witness for Jesus. They're picked on at work. They're picked on in their communities. They're picked on on Facebook, on YouTube. Our master, Jesus Christ, was, was persecuted daily, always persecuted. And if he was persecuted, you better believe we're going to be. But if you're not persecuted, if you don't have anything going wrong in your life, look in the mirror. Fall on your knees and ask Jesus Christ to show you where you're falling short because Satan will be after you night and day. Satan's not going to be after the backslidden Christians. He won't be after the Christians who aren't doing anything for Jesus because he's already got them. They're no threat to him. He wants the frontline warriors. He wants those who are in God's army. He don't care about the ones sitting on the sidelines with an industrial 55-gallon drum of popcorn in their lawn chair just filling their mouth and watching the war, watching the game instead of getting in it. He don't care about them. Understand, when you see this kind of stuff, you fight about it, you spread the word, you tell everybody what's going on. Don't stand still. Don't stand for it. Just saw again today, a big nativity scene. They took the nativity scenes away in California, and they're putting atheist stuff. They got a picture of Jesus, and of God, and of Santa Claus, and of Poseidon. Or, or, what myths do you see here? They take away all of the nativities, but they put that up there. And then they got another atheist nativity scene in a big city where they've got Darwin there, and they've got some angel making fun, saying, oh, look, it, it's, it's a girl, look, pointing, and it's not even Jesus in the, in the, in the, in the um, manger, it's a, it's, a, it's a little black child, a little black boy, and they're, and they're saying, oh, look, it's a girl, and they, they don't have any of the, it's not even dressed like Jesus, and they got all these uh, wicked people standing around instead of the wise men and the kings. I'm sick and tired of it. Make a stand now, Christians, time's almost up. No one knows the end of the hour of the rapture but God. But we know. He's told us if we're watching and waiting, he'll tell us the season. We're in the season. I believe we're in the last moments of the season, the last seconds of the season. It, he'll come in the twinkling of an eye. I had a friend ask me today, how fast will it be? The Bible says the twinkling of an eye. Blink your eyes. That's how fast it'll be. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and all of us will go with him who are ready. That's how fast in the, blinking, in the twinkling of an eye, in the blink of an eye. There's no time for timeouts. There's no do-overs. There's no, oh, wait a sec. Jesus, I was just about to repent. There's none of that. All you backslidden Christians who lie, who call the Bible a book of lies, who call God a liar by saying you don't have to repent of your sins after you're saved, although the Bible says hundreds of times you do, fall on your face and repent now before it's too late. Stop, you know, before Jesus Christ comes, because he's, he's the judge. Jesus, God has Jesus do the judging at the end. He'll be at the Bema Seat judgment for the true bride of Christ, a few of us. He'll be at the great white throne judgment. And he's already said in the, in the last book of the Bible in Revelations, chapter 3, he said, that those Christians who do not finish the race with spotless garments, who don't repent of their sins after they're saved, he will blot their names out of the book of life. He will deny them before the Father God and the angels. So what's it going to be, my friends, heaven or hell, Jesus or Satan? Who's lying? Are you lying when you say we don't have to repent of our sins after we're saved? Or is God lying but say we do? It's a no-brainer. God doesn't lie. You're lying. Let's pray. I love you, Jesus. I thank you so much for your love, for your mercy, for your goodness, for your kindness, for your generosity. You're so awesome, and I just appreciate you so much. And, and I'm, I'm so sorry for what this world has become. I'm so sorry for this wicked, filthy, filthy, evil nation of Sodom and Gomorrah, of this cesspool I live in. This whole planet is getting wicked. But this country, since Mr. Obama was reelected, all hell has been breaking loose here. The demonic level is going berserk. I pray that you would just help Christians to stand up, put on the full armor night and day, stand up against this kind of stuff, be Christians, true followers of Jesus Christ. And I pray those who are backslidden, who will not repent of their sins, you'd rebuke, correct, convict, teach. You would howl them, drag them to sackcloth and ashes, drag them to the bottom of the mud pit. Don't give them a moment's happiness, peace, joy, satisfaction, comfort, nothing in their life, no satisfaction, till they fall on their face and repent and come back to you. And I pray that you would help those who are lost and never, never known you as Lord and Savior, tug on their hearts till they come to you. And those of us who are Christians, if we won't pray for the lost and witness to them daily, I pray the same curse upon us. I ask you in your precious name. Amen. If you watch this video and don't know that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I know I've sinned. I've done bad things in my life, and I'm sorry. I believe you came to earth. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you rose again on the third day, went back to heaven to be at the right-hand side of the Father. And since that time, you're making a place in heaven for all Christians forever. Please forgive me of my sins, Jesus. Wash my heart white as snow. Come live in my heart. Make me a new creature in Christ, a child of the King. Your precious name I ask you. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. Jesus says that all who come to me and ask shall be saved. When you pray that prayer, you're saved. When you get saved, ask Jesus Christ to just pray to him every day. He loves you. He's your new best friend. He wants to talk to you every single day. Get your King James Version Bible. It's the living, breathing word of God. The way you feed your body with food and water every day, this Bible will feed your spirit and soul if you read it every day. 
Make sure you get water baptized in a Christian church, immersion baptized. Sprinkle baptized doesn't count. Do it over, my friends. Pray to be filled with the Holy Spirit, sanctified from head to toe. What little time we have left is you draw closer to Christ before the imminent rapture. You do this by reading the Bible, by praying, and by living for Him. Take your King James Version Bible to church. When the pastor preaches, when I pre teach and preach, anyone does or says anything about the Bible, you compare it. If it don't match your Bible, you close that Bible, you walk out of church, you unfriend, you unsubscribe, run away as fast as you can because anyone who will lie to you in Jesus' name, anyone who will lie to you about what the Word of God says, they will drag you to hell, my friends. It's very important. If you have questions, comments, concerns, you want me to pray for anything from a terminal illness to a sick pet, anything in between, contact me. I had the gift of faith, mustard seed faith. I didn't earn it or deserve it. Praise the Lord, I've got it. When I prayed for it, he gave it to me. And I know that he'll perform a miracle in your life if it's within his holy will. Ask me and I'll pray for you. And if he does perform that miracle, it'll all be through his praise, honor, glory, power, might, majesty, strength, love, compassion, mercy, kindness, gentleness, tenderness, understanding. Nothing to do with me. I'm the least in God's kingdom, a tiny fish in a huge ocean, a slave for Jesus Christ. Please share this video, the link to this channel, with friends, neighbors, co-workers, loved ones, with strangers. Drop it in a blog, plant the seed, and walk away. Let God water it so it can grow. The cotton candy powder puff, syrupy fluff garbage you hear all across the internet, all across churches everywhere, is the word that leads to hell. The word that leads to heaven, that points to the cross of Christ, where you can kneel and be covered, washed by his precious blood, have your sins forgiven, be saved, makes you want to repent, is a King James Version Bible, verse, chapter, book, cover to cover, Genesis to Revelation, all 66 books, the way I preach it on this channel. Not because I'm anything, because God's everything. I love you guys. I pray for you every day. May God bless you. Thanks.